Hello, Rads. It's Friday. It's talking Rads. Me, Gareth Roberts. John Gibbons with me today. Uh, we're going to have a chat about the Rads. Uh, we're not going to do Huddersfield v Liverpool because there's a preview video out uh, round about the same time as this, hopefully. So give that a watch if you want that kind of chat. We're going to talk about some of the stuff that's in the news today. Uh, John's done a little agenda here and he's put at the top. Sturridge. I'm feeling amazing. I mean, that's good news, isn't it? <laughs> it's all right, uh, isn't it? When he started, he's done a little interview and just said, basically, this run of games, it's five games in the next 18, 18 days, it is. And he said, you know, it's great squad, but I'm feeling good. And then he upgraded that to amazing because he didn't think good was good enough. And um, just said, basically, that he's ready for the for the boss when he needs him, which is good news, great option, player of the month, yeah. of course. And, um, yeah, better than... But, you know, look, we were all talking about lack of attacking options last season and now it feels like we've got more and that's better in it. And he's already scored more than last season. And I think as well, like, the, the, the way he talks now is, is different for me. So, yeah. like, the same interview he's talking about, you know, he, he's happy to come off the bench, he's happy to start, he's happy to contribute, saying about how good the squad is, how good the feeling around the squad is. And I, I don't want to slag him off here, but I kind of feel like in the past, you know, he has been perceived as a little bit of a problem child, not just at Liverpool, but at other clubs, you know, a player who has felt like, you know, I should be starting, I'm good enough, I, I should be the main man. And I think maybe a little bit of that's been, has gone now and he sort of appreciates where he is a little bit more. Yeah, perhaps. I think if you're going to say that oh, his attitude changed, then you sort of buy that acknowledging that there was a, there was a yeah. different attitude that I knew, and I think that's sort of fair enough. I don't think he was wrong to necessarily see himself in a certain way, but you you know, your perception of yourself changes based on circumstance and I think he's obviously with the, with the West Brom move and, and with all that and I think maybe realised that obviously Liverpool's a great place for him to, for him to be, a great place to play your footy and it, you know, to feel part of something, hope the way hoping to be really, really exciting. So I think he's gonna have a big part to play. Wouldn't surprise me at all if he starts Saturday and then, you know, maybe Cardiff next next week next home game as well because I think I think those games are set up for him in terms yeah. of what he can do. And he's he's probably just matured as well. I mean he's twenty nine now, isn't he? And there is apparently still a little bit of a doubt over Mane. Uh, some of the other players it, it, it kind of feels like they're going to be all right. So you see Moen training, you see Van Dijk in training, both of them are expected to, to start against Huddersfield, uh, but maybe not Mane, and maybe that's how, how he fits Sturridge into the first team, but we shall see. As I say, we get into all that more on the preview show, so look out for that. Uh, the other one today is that um, we'd heard already that Alberto Moreno, Moreno is likely to leave at the end of the season on a free, um, not, not going to be offered a new contract by Liverpool by all accounts. Um, and so the clubs are starting to circle now and have a bit of a mooch. I'm quite surprised by some of the ones that are allegedly <laughs> circling and having a mooch solo. So Arsenal are apparently interested, but also in the same report that says Arsenal, it also says Madrid and Barcelona are interested and it's a bit like, I, I, have you seen them, lads? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, he was highly thought of in Spain, yeah. wasn't he, when he was at Seville, obviously he won the Euro uh, Europa League with them and um, you know, at the time he was he was one of the hottest prospects, and, and Liverpool had thought of as doing well to get get him. So maybe like you know, he's still got a bad reputation a little bit. I don't think he's got in many Spain squads since. No. But I think like you know, maybe maybe he still sees something in him. I think there's always a thing where someone's gone a free, and you think uh, maybe comes think, well, we'll get him in, and then if it doesn't work, we'll, we'll maybe yeah. make a few quid on them. He's got to make a decision. Now, is it what he wants to do? If he's if he's not playing a lot in Liverpool, then going to Real Madrid might seem like a strange thing but you know it's not my career so I'll wait and see but yes yeah, some, some decent clubs I don't know probably end up bother them now I know <laughs> bit mad I mean from, from a Liverpool thing like I think it's mad the way Liverpool are still sort of putting out little videos of them like megging people in training and doing little tricks and stuff and it's like well, Sam, but he's not going to get a game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what's he there for now? Just like, as a class clown, just making everyone laugh and that. Yeah, um, so, yeah, likelihood is that he goes, likelihood is that he goes to a, an half decent club, by the sounds of things. Um, Oxley Chamberlain as well, another, uh, another step forward in his rehabilitation towards fitness. Um, running. <laughs> His new step is running on an anti-gravity treadmill, which yeah, is a new I, one to me. Yeah, I called it an anti-oxygen <laughs> treadmill before, which, uh, which is wrong. Yeah. Just don't try that at home. Um, yeah. Yeah, he looked, he looked made up on it, like, he looked... I didn't see it, is he floating uh, or something? <laughs> no, he is running, but I think it takes, like, the pressure away. But, yeah, he's doing, like, a big, big cheesy grin and all that. So, you know, he seems, he seems to be in high spirits. I think everyone said that 
you know, I mean, you don't know, but it's just you can only go on, on, on what people say. What everyone says that he's obviously approached us really having great spirits, and he, you know, he's an inspiration in terms of you know not getting down, being positive, and you know, who knows, we might see him this season after all. But yeah, it's a, it's another step towards that, and you know, anti gravity gravity run, and I don't think the, I don't think the Keegan's day like for him. No. Uh, <laughs> Do you think it's getting over on him? Do you think it's getting overplayed a little bit this card that we're missing him and that you know the idea that he bursts from midfield and that all the other midfielders are all a bit tamey? Is that getting a little bit overplayed? Because I just kind of think if the front three were firing a bit more, we wouldn't be talking about the midfield. I think it is a little bit in that also. You know, he's been talked about like this this key player when really what he only had two or three good months with us. Didn't mm. he took him ages to sell, and that's not having a go at him. But you know, I think if you're going to talk about are we really missing, he's got to be someone who you know was in the side for for a bit longer than that and doing stuff. I think I think as well when Alden proved in the week with his goal against Germany that he's capable of doing yeah. that. I think I think we've been playing him deeper. But I think if we chose to, that game that Chamberlain got injured when Alden came on and played and played great and played the same role. So I think I think he's capable of doing that we've just obviously decided to use him in a slightly different way so there are people we can unleash and as you say if, the, if I think you only start looking at what the midfield's contributing goals and assists wise if the forward kind yeah. of players aren't doing it so wait and see but I think I think Lallana coming back could be, could be one as well that, that you maybe see him doing a little bit more of that but we'll have to wait and see sort of you know if, if, if Lallana can get close to what we know he's capable of and if Mo bangs an at six at no one's talking about the midfield so <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, on the club next, the next one on the uh, agenda is really uh, just talking about the club. I mean, people say sometimes that we're sort of quick to get stuck into them, and maybe we are. Uh, and this is a positive thing, though. So, obviously, Red Star, Belgrade's fans are banned from uh, coming to the match on Wednesday, which leaves, you know, 2,000 or 2,500 tickets or so uh, unsold for what would have been the away allocation. So, the club's put them on sale today, uh, and, and they've, they've said that it, it's ring fence basically for 17 to 21 year olds who are men members and season ticket holders, so get, giving them the opportunity to fill those spaces. It's obviously something we talk about a lot. Um, I'm on one of the fan committees as well, and we talked about that a lot on that, just sort of how can we get the younger generation into the ground, what can we do? It's very difficult because, you know, a lot of tickets are just in hands and remain in hands and will remain in those hands forevermore, it seems. And so, you know, a lot of the crowd just gets older and older and older. I know when I take a picture of where I sit and put it on Instagram, I do it, do it all the time, really just look at me, I'm at the mat. Um, but, it, but it's like... Someone always comments saying, look at all the bald heads on that. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it's true. You know, there are a lot of old men who go to, who go to Liverpool matches. Um, and it's probably reflected across the league. Um, so it, it's a good thing, isn't it, John, that they're doing this. A, a nice gesture towards the, our younger fans. Yeah, it's really good. Obviously, it's a bit of a unique opportunity. But look, if, if, if the, you know, I'm not sure quite how many tickets is, but if it's, say, a thousand tickets and they're all together, and they're all making noise and creating an atmosphere, then I think it'll maybe turn a few heads and maybe mm -hmm. the club will start thinking about about something that, you know, well, could, could something could be done here and, and maybe maybe create something in the future. So I hope it's a great success. I hope that's like, you know, a, an almost a rival to the cop, because that's what the Annie Road be used to be, yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. it? My dad used to go on the Annie Road and they used to sing the cop out to cop shakes yeah, and yeah. all that. And, <laughs> you know, that's where that come from. And so there used to be a little rivalry there between the two. And, you know, it'd be nice if, if, if that kind of happens Wednesday. If it doesn't happen that kind of atmosphere, Wise, it's still what's nice is that they're not selling this on history, and so I think something that can be frustrating for young people is that oh, everything's on you know the credits and yeah. ways you start. And they understand that really, understand why they sell on credits because you want to reward loyalty. But if you're an 18 year old lad and you want to start going with your mates, then you want zero credits. And so, what, what have you, you know, even if the only thing that comes off it is that there's a thousand lads who've got a, who've got a European credit, so then maybe you can get a ticket for the Napoli home game, then, then that's good too. Yeah, be great. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm having a go at the uh, upper main. Oh yeah, yeah, for the first time. Yeah, because um, the, the the cards fucked up because the card changed and like you know, so the it, it didn't go through. Right. And then I got an email saying it hadn't gone through, and I tried to fix it. Thought I had done. Turned out I hadn't. And then I got another email saying we sold your seat to you later. Um, <laughs> so it's like oh Sam. That's that's the usual experience, yeah. by the way, Matt, in this one. <laughs> so uh, ended up I'm in the upper main. Um, so I'm kind of looking forward to it. Yeah, see what it's like. Bit, it's a bit so I'll, I'll be able to see if these boys have brought the singing voice from You'll up have there. To be a bit better. Up there, I know, yeah, I know. Posh up there, isn't it? <laughs> uh, and that's it, that's it really uh, in terms of the agenda. In terms of uh, what we're doing this weekend and what, what shows are out and stuff, um, 
post-match pint tomorrow. Uh, we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to go to the Marine v Salford game. Uh, talk of Gary Neville being there. So we uh, might go and have a word if he is. Um, but yeah, it should be tasty, that one. It's the fourth qualifying round of the FA Cup. Scousers v Manx, uh, three o'clock kick-off. Uh, get down to that one if you can. Come and say hello. Come and have a pint. Uh, we'll be doing the post-match pint in the bar afterwards. We're going to watch the game there, the Liverpool game straight after the Marine game. Uh, in terms of shows, Weekender is already out there, already free, already available for you to go and listen to, pass on to your mates, all the rest of it. It's a good taster of what we do on the Anfield app, that, that one, if you don't subscribe. Uh, Team Talk will be out later today as well, which is where we watch Jürgen Klopp's press conference and then have a chat about what's being said and sort of preview the game a little bit. And then the madness later on of AFQ, uh, where everyone has a bevy on a Friday afternoon and answers silly questions off the internet. It's better than the towns, honestly. <laughs> uh, so all that's out there. Get on that. Get on the preview show, which I've mentioned a couple of times. Watch the post-match pints after we beat Huddersfield. Let's be honest, that's what's going to happen, isn't it? Have a great weekend, whatever you're doing. See you next week. That's been Talking Reds.